Hey guys, it's Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. The Jeep is still in the workshop and I'm still waiting on the two unit bearings and the new shaft. And uh, it does take a, quite a while for parts to arrive around here, which is kind of annoying sometimes. But um, they're nearly here, should be here next week. And then it's time to get all the gear loaded back into the vehicle, sleeping bags, camp gear, the camp kitchen, all that sort of stuff. I've got a three day trip planned just to start the summer off with. And I really can't wait to get out there. And in this video, we're going to be talking about outer axle seals for the Dana 30. And there are big pros and cons to running outer axle seals. And I'm going to show you why in this video. These are the outer axle seals I run now. This is basically what they call in Sweden a gummy nipple, which is an adapter that does around 32 to 50 millimeters on plumbing pipe. I've been using these now for probably the last three years and um, they cost around two to four dollars to buy if you're from the US, probably around two or three pounds. It has three baffles in it, so you've got kind of three rings on the inside and um, you can pack them full of grease and they're easy to top up to. You just need a, a kind of narrow adapter on the end of the grease gun. You just push it in like past the axle like that and you just pump them full of grease. There's not really any need to put a zerk on it or do anything fancy with it. And when they wear out, you just throw them away and obviously buy and put a new set in. But prior to running these, I ran the standard outer axle seals that you often see marketed for Jeeps and other such vehicles and front ends with this kind of design. And they range in price. You can get kind of repro copy ones for around about 20 pounds. It can go all the way up to well over a hundred pounds when you start looking at name brands. And the idea is, is it's supposed to keep water from going into the axle tube and getting near the inner axle seal. You might think, well, that's a stupid design to put an inner axle seal all the way in. Why didn't they put it right at the front here like they do at the back on this Chrysler 8, eight and a quarter or a Dana 44 or a Dana 35? You know, they have the, the axle seal right at the, you know, literally right next to the wheel. So nothing can get near the pumpkin at all. And uh, the shafts remain corrosion free. Um, it's a completely des different design back there than it is up front and in this video obviously we're going to, as I say, we're going to talk about pros and cons of these outer axle seals because it does come with a bit of a price if you run these that they're not foolproof and there's good reason for that and it's because of the design of the front axle. The wheel at the back doesn't turn as in steer like this. It doesn't change on its axis, it just goes round and round and round so an a, a seal right at the end of the actual axle housing is absolutely fine because that shaft is always going to remain centralized. The reason you have the inner axle seal as far back as possible in the axle housing near the pumpkin is because when you move this knuckle like this, the axle shaft tilts like that. It moves. And you may not have noticed that before, but if you go out and you have a look at your Jeep and you test it, you'll see it move too. And I'll show you it close up now. If you have a look at this opening just here, you can see that um, we have one the other side too, although the shadow might make that difficult for you to see. But if we move the actual knuckle, you can see that opening close up when the knuckle goes this way. You know, and then when we go this way, the opening gets bigger, actually quite a lot bigger, by a fair few millimetres, maybe three mil. So you can see it close up and it's getting bigger again. So you might be thinking, Mike, your axle's toast, mate. There's something seriously wrong with it to have that much movement right at the end of the shaft. But I'm telling you, this is how they are and it's normal. First of all, I learned the hard way because back in the UK, we've basically got a lot of water, a lot of muddy rivers. And um, what was happening with me was my inner axle seal was getting kind of compromised pretty readily. So I was thinking, well, what's the solution to this? So I need one of these outer axle seals. So I bought one, I put it on there. It lasted about three months and then I noticed that it wasn't sealing anymore. I took it apart, water came out of the housing. I thought, okay, maybe there's something wrong with my axle, maybe the seals were bad. Bought another set, put those in, same problem. And really it's because as you're driving down the highway and you're going through town and you're driving, you're turning, the shaft's moving, you're wallowing out the rubber seal, it's getting hot. You might not be greasing it frequently enough, even though I greased the second set I had more than I've greased anything else on the vehicle. 
it just didn't make a difference. They just wore out and what they were doing was they were letting the water and the garbage in when I was going off-roading and they weren't letting it out. And that's kind of the bad thing about them really. In a way they're great because they do actually provide a good line of defense. You know, they are stopping a lot of stuff getting in, but um, provided on kind of, depending on how much you maintain your vehicle, if you let that stuff build up in the housing, then it can be a problem. Obviously, if maybe you took your housing apart and serviced it once a year, you probably wouldn't have an issue and the outer axle seals would do their job and that's kind of what I do now. But one other thing I did, and I have a pretty poor photo to show it, is I thought, well, there's gotta be another solution to this to make these outer axle seals perform better. I'm gonna pack grease up inside the axle housing right up to the inner seal and then put the outer seal on. So you've basically got grease packed inside the axle tubes. You know, that way the water will never get in there. You know, and if it does, it will just be at the front and it's gonna buy me a lot of time and preserve those um, those seals inside. And I did that twice and um, it was actually worse than, than having nothing in there at all and just having the outer axle seal. Because what was happening was the water was getting in, it was mixing with the grease, it was becoming like this emulsified solution that was essentially warming up and thinning down as well as I was driving. And it was actually seeping in through the inner axle seals. I don't know why. And it was pitting the bearings even faster than running nothing at all. Not even having an outer axle seal, just just running it. You know, it was, it was pitting the bearings really, really quickly. And I guess the grease was acting as a carrier for the, for the water. And, and somehow getting past the inner axle seal and making it even worse. We can take this one out here. This is the side I'm waiting for the bearing and the shaft on. We'll pop that out you can have a look at it. So yeah, you can see where the rubber's been eaten away here and eaten away just there. This is kind of where, what, we, what you saw the other side, the shaft going like that. It's probably a lot less noticeable on this side in a way because you've got a much longer shaft over that side. So there's going to be a bit more movement but um, all in all it's, it's definitely done its job obviously there's diff oil coming out because I've pulled the axle shaft out but we'll shine a light up inside here and we'll have a look what's in there so it's not looking too bad in there and those inner axle seals look okay there is a little bit of debris in there you can see that's got in it's close to the inner axle seal but that's but that's done its job and all in all it's really just a, a little bit of grease and a few bits and bobs so it's not too bad. I'm pulling this apart so you can see the condition of the axle shaft behind the seal. See what sort of condition we're in. You can see where the actual rubber's kind of all got mashed up there. That's fair enough. But this shaft's going on about five years old now. Yeah probably five years and you can see the condition of it is is pretty good. Um, and this was the original shaft I was using as well. On those video clips you saw of me in this video earlier, driving around in the deep water and stuff, and I was using generic outer axle seals, not these ones here, although I have used these ones for a while too. So you can see it's in pretty good condition. It's not really got any corrosion on it, and uh, you know, it, it's doing its job, really. The, the, the outer axle seal is doing its job. The reason I wanted to make this video was because I'm doing the job at the moment. Um, so it makes sense to do it now and I've been asked a number of times people have spotted this blue thing on the end of the axle and they said what, what is that you know what kind of outer axle seal is that and I've tried to explain what it is but it's, it's not quite the same as you know showing it and, and, sh and, and kind of showing the reason why you're using it obviously I've spent on two occasions around 70 pounds on outer axle seals the, the, the proper ones and they both both let me down really in a way um, in some way no because look at the shaft it still looks good after five years they obviously did their job to a degree but they did their job because I do a lot of maintenance on my vehicle and every time it's in the garage and I've got a job to do somewhere I generally pull other stuff apart and I look for problems and, and when I discover a problem I sort it out I don't just leave it so that's the reason why they probably work so well is because I'm you know, I suffer from OCD, so <laughs> so I'm always like hammering everything on my vehicle, um, you know, and checking it all the time. But at the same time, you know, I paid all that money and they don't really work because physically they can't, you know, because they just can't work, you know, um, because of the way the shaft moves. 
it, what someone needs to do if they're going to build those outer axle seals is they need to put a really big rubbery seal on the end of it, an O-ring. It's really big and is able to move and conform a bit to the actual shaft. And obviously that relies on the shaft being non-corroded in the first place. And I think that's part of the problem. People buy these outer axle seals, the, the shaft's already heavily corroded. You're basically expecting a bit of rubber to seal around some sandpaper while it spins massively quick and burns all the lubrication away. And then you turn corners and it's kind of pushing left and right anyway. So it's never really going to work. So I thought this video would be useful for people out there who you know they're on a budget like me and um, you know you're just looking for stuff that works and if it doesn't work it shouldn't really cost a lot of money um, you can get the China clone outer axle seals and I'm sure they're just as good as the name brand ones and they can be around 20 pounds I know Max Peeling Rods does a set for 25 pounds so they've sponsored me a few times and obviously this video is not sponsored by them but it was something I was clocking on their website to buy for myself um, yeah, you can get real high-end ones, you know, they go over 100 euros, 100 pounds, for example. And it really is where you want to put your money and how much money you've got. Paying three pounds for something like this for me and, um, you know, popping them out once a year, once every couple of years. It's been two years now since I took those out. It's good enough for me. But obviously Sweden's a dry country. Um, there's not a lot of water here in terms of, like, driving through it. Back home there was tons, so it really depends on where you live. But it's a good snug fit too. Um, I'll put what this is in the description because it's probably what you're all going to ask. This is a 32 to 40 millimeter um, pipe sleeve. Um, you know, I'll, I'll find some links, US links, European links, UK links. I'll put them in the description. Even if the links might not be correct, as in, you know, it might not be in your country, at least you get the idea of what it's called and you can search for it in your country. Um, but it's a, a pretty snug fit. You've got three baffles. It seals really good. And the nice thing about it is it actually, it actually moves and conforms to the shaft as it moves. So you, know, you, you get a little bit more time with this one. And those three baffles, you know, it makes all the difference really. Um, but yeah, I hope this video helped out. Thanks for watching, just a quick one really. Uh, but you know, a useful one, I suppose, for those of you building up vehicles and you, you know you're getting to this job. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks again. Oh yeah, it's a good fit.